it's the extra practice for 2.2. Typically it says, I, mean, I know it says test up there, but I was fiddling around. Uh, this first one, uh, we are isolating for the variable and it is in an inequality. So we need to recognize that there will be an infinite number of solutions. We'll have a boundary. That boundary sometimes will be included in the solutions and the boundary sometimes will not be included. The boundary will be either true or false, meaning it will be a solution or it won't be a solution. So let's isolate the variable. The variable three is being subtracted from it. So we can add three and what we do to one side, we do to the other and we get the solution. X is less than negative one. X represents the solution. So the solutions are going to be less than negative one. So we are not going to include it in the list of infinite solutions. And we're going to take the values that are less than it. So if we tested negative seven, negative seven minus three is negative 10, that would be less than negative four. So we consider this a true value. It's true and it makes a true statement, so it's considered a solution. If we plugged in negative one minus three, that's negative four. And negative four is not less than negative four. So this number, this boundary, negative one is the boundary, would be considered false, hence why it's not colored in. It is not a solution to the inequality. And any value over on the right here is also going to be false. So you see that we have an infinite number of trues on this side. We have an infinite number of falses or no solutions on this side. And then we have this boundary, which differentiates our trues from our falses. Trues don't always have to be on the left side. In this case, they are uh, because our solutions are going to be less than. So let's erase some of all that. So, ooh, I want to go backwards, please and we can erase that. So this is going to be our solution, but for understanding what we are graphing and why we're graphing that, it's important for us to understand what that information means. We're gonna add three to both sides. We get zero is greater than H. I would advise you to rewrite it. And when you rewrite it, make sure we see that the inequality is eating zero when we rewrite it make sure the inequality is still eating the zero. So we have our solutions. The solutions, when we see the variable, we think of the solutions are less than zero. So open circle because we're not, in go we're not going to include them. Did I do that wrong? Oh boy, Mr. Mac made a mistake. Yes, he did on the answer key. So uh, Mr. Mack has to go and correct that answer key. Yes, thank goodness, this is why we do this. Yep, this is correct. It is going to the left and our solutions are gonna be less than. Now let's say if I'm still hesitant. So let's pick a number, negative six. Let's plug in negative six and that makes negative nine. Is that less than negative three? Yes. So I tested it, this came out as true, and that was good. And we can also check a false. We would assume that all these values would be false. So we could pick a number like 10, which would give me seven on the right side, and seven is not less than negative three. So this is the correct answer. Mr. Mack will go back and fix that on the answer key. First thing we're gonna do is simplify. We always look to see, can I simplify the left side of the inequality or the right side before isolating? You will always wanna isolate prior to, or you will also wanna simplify prior to isolating. We have S is greater than or equal to one. So this time we're gonna include the boundary because if we plug in the value of one, it will end up being true and we want solutions that are greater than one. We'll have a closed circle this time. Number four, again, we're going to simplify the inequality first, and now we're gonna move the variable. U is less than one, and so this is going to be an open circle because it's less than, and we're going to go to the left. Very nice.
Number five, we can simplify. We have like terms here. 4c minus 3c is c plus 10. Now we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. We get 2 is less than or equal to c. I'd rewrite it as c is greater than or equal to 2. I'm going to have a closed circle, and I'm going to go to the right. Number 6, we have like terms again. We'll have 15 plus p is greater than 13. We could simplify not only the left side, we can simplify on the right side. Now I'm going to isolate the variable. I'm going to get rid of that positive 15, and I get p is greater than negative 2. That's an open circle going to the right. All right, 7 through 10 wants us to write a sentence as an inequality and then solve the inequality. We don't have to graph it, we just have to solve it. So let's translate it. So I'm always going to look for the is, and then I'm going to see is no more than. Okay, what does that mean as an inequality sign? Is no more than. So it can't be more than, so it must be less than. Can, is no more than 23. So it can be equal to it, it just can't be more than 23. So that's a little bit of the tricky part there. Do I include the equal sign or not? A number minus 6. So that gets translated to an n minus 6 is less than or equal to, and then we have our last part, 23. So 23. So we have n minus 6 is less than or equal to 23. Now they want us to solve it, then solve the inequality. We're going to add 6 to both sides, and we get n is less than or equal to 29. Nice. Good one there. A number plus 7 is at least negative 2. I'm looking for the is. That starts my inequality. At least. So it has to be at least. It can be equal to negative 2, but it has to be at least. So I'm going to say is at least is greater than or equal to. And now I'm going to break down the rest of the problem. We're going to have a number plus 7. Okay, so a number, let's do x this time, plus 7 is at least negative 2. So that's going to be my last part negative 2, and x plus 7 is at least negative 2, the smallest value, so it has to be more than that, and now we're going to solve it, minus 7, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 9. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter what variable you pick, the sum of a number and one-fourth is greater than one and three-fourths. So I'm looking for that is. And then greater than, that's more of a traditional. We're good, is greater than. And now we start breaking down the rest of the problem. The sum, okay, of a number and one-fourth. So we're going to add those two things together. We have a number. Let's do w plus one-fourth is greater than one and three-fourths. We'll leave it as a mixed number. We'll see if we can, uh, if we have to convert it or not. So I'm going to subtract one-fourth, subtract one-fourth. We get w is greater than one and two-fourths. We cannot leave that as two-fourths. We must simplify that. So that's going to be w is greater than one and one half. If you converted it to an improper fraction, three over two is acceptable. You cannot have six over four. Number 10, nine is less than the difference of a number and six and five eighths. So let's take a look at this. Here's my is less than, okay, is less than, that's the traditional, is less than, and now let's look at the numbers in front. 9, that's easy. 9 is less than the difference. Okay, 
What does the difference mean? The difference mean oh, I'm not going to use green. The difference is subtraction. So we're going to subtract a number n 6 and 5 eighths. So we're going to have a number. Let's do p minus 6 and 5 eighths. Okay, so let's add 6 and 5 eighths in order to solve for p. 6 and 5 eighths, and that'll give me uh, 15 and 5 eighths is less than p. We could leave it like that. We could also write p is greater than 15 and 5 eighths. Uh, I probably wouldn't convert it to an improper fraction. There was no necessary, it wasn't necessary. So that's a pretty reasonable solution you could expect to see. But if you did, that's fine. Do a little more work. All right, number 11. The school baseball record for no hitter innings is 112 in a season. This year's team currently has 87 no hitter innings. Wow. What are the possible numbers of additional no hitter innings the team can achieve to match or break the school record in a season? So, what plus 87? needs to be greater than or equal to 112 because we're looking for the value plus the current no hitters that will give me a value greater than the current record. And if we want to find out what it is and then we want to solve this, so we subtract 87 from 112 and we get um, 25. That's zero, that's five, and eight from 10 is two. So the number they need to pitch, they need at least 25 more no hitter innings. They need at least the smallest, at least 25 more no hitter innings. And if they pitch 25, that's going to tie the record. So what are the possible numbers of additional hitters the team can achieve to match? So that's why we were able to do 25. If it was just to break it, it would be 26 because it wouldn't be 25. 25 would tie it and they want you to break it. So this is acceptable. You can do 25 or more. Good. I like that question. A lot of thinking. Write and graph an inequality that represents the numbers that are not solutions of the inequality x minus 2.8 is greater than 15. So let's solve it and see what the solutions are. We get x are, the solutions are greater than uh, 17.8. So if these are the solutions, let's look and see. We'll do it in green. So 17.8. So the solutions are going to be an open circle there. So which ones are not? So since 17.8 is not a solution, this is not a solution, and then all of these are not solutions because the green are solutions. And since that's an open circle, we know 17. So the ones that are not solutions values less than and less than or equal to 17.8 are not solutions to the graph to the inequality okay sound good uh write and graph an inequality that represents the numbers so write and graph. So if we had to write, we would say um, x is less than or equal to 17.8 because we got to write an inequality for it. So write and graph. And the graph would be the red part. Number 13. I think, no, we got two more. Which of the following inequalities are equivalent to the inequality? Uh, so is this equivalent to, is this A equivalent to five, no, let's not use green, five is less than negative Y plus B. Are these 
the same. So what did we do? So if we add y to both sides, we get 5 plus y is less than b. And if we move that b to the other side, we get 5 plus y minus b is less than 0. Uh, so no, these are not, are, this is not equivalent because b needed to be uh, negative. So that would not be considered equivalent. Let's do this again. Negative y plus b. All right, what do they do here? Well, uh, they have the y on the other side, so let's move the y over. We get y plus 5 is less than b, and then they move the, the 5 over to the other side, and we get y is less than b minus 5. Yes, okay, that is equivalent. And we showed mathematically why this is the case. We use equivalencies uh, you know, multiplication, division, inverse, equality, to show why these are true, why they are considered. Let's hear 5 is less than negative y plus b. Um, so we have uh, a positive y. Okay. Well, uh, we have y over there. Let's move the y over, because I need it to be positive. See if I can get it to be like the problem. Um, and then the 5 is with the b, so we're going to subtract 5. So we have 5 is less than b minus 5. But we have, uh, we have the y. So if I rewrite this, if I write b minus 5 is greater than y, notice it's eating the b and it's eating the b minus 5, that's okay. So we haven't changed the equation. We didn't move it across, we just flipped the whole entire inequality. So are those the same? b minus 5 is, yeah. So yes, they are equivalent. Yes, equivalent. That's a little bit tricky. I like to give you stuff to challenge you. So 5 is less than negative y plus b. Uh, my y again is on the right side. This time it's positive. So I'm going to go through that same process of writing, getting my y positive. I'm doing it based upon y. My 5 is over with the b. So we have y is less than b minus 5. And my y is positive. Now I want to flip the inequality. So we have b minus 5. It's eating the b minus 5 and y. So we have my y as positive on the right side. We have my b minus 5, but notice the inequalities are not the same, so not equivalent. Okay, so that's a nice little tricky one. Um, there's another way of doing that, but yeah, we'll, we'll let, leave it at that. Write an inequality that requires using addition or subtraction to solve and has the solution shown in the graph. Then describe a real life situation that can be modeled by the inequality. All right, so we have, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do n is greater than 10, sorry, n is less than or equal to 10.4. That's my solution. So if I add 10 to both sides, we end up with n plus 10 is less than or equal to 20.4. That can be my starting equation. And now I have to think about a real life situation that has n plus 10 is less than 20.4. So what we can say is I bought an item in the store for $10 and I have $20.40 in my pocket. How much more money can I spend in the store? So this is my leftover money. This is how much money I can spend left. This is how much I've already spent. And this is how much I have in my pocket. So we want to know I bought a candy bar for $10 and I have 20, or let's start it this way. I have $20.40 in my pocket. Uh, 
I am going to purchase a candy bar for $10. How much more money, how much more money, how much, uh, hmm, how much more money can I spend, how much more money can I spend? Yeah, I guess that's going to be it, right? I can spend up to. I can spend $10.40 and less. I like that. That's not bad. We can use that one. I'm confident with that problem. All right, good luck. Enjoy. Have fun. Um, and keep working hard.